Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bidami and this is Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend. A uh, remake and a sequel to Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. And yes, I realize that the name is kind of convoluted, but trust me, the whole Blaze Blue franchise is uh, a rather complicated storyline with complicated titles. Let's let's go with that. But in any case, the Continuum Shift Extend is a part of Blaze Blue franchise, and is an and is a very good fighting game. If we could, all things considered. It is developed by Arc System Works, who, whom you may know as the developers of Guilty Gear, well, Guilty Gear franchise, Blaze Blue franchise, uh, who else? Uh, the Persona, the Shin Megami Tensei Persona fighting franchise, as well as the crossover with Ruby, Blaze Blue, Persona, and the fourth game, which I never played. And also for the DLC debacle they they put themselves in when they actually published that crossover. But in all honesty, we're not here to discuss the shortcomings of the company, we're here to discuss the game in front of us. And and so far I have to I have to say that I'm impressed. Uh, for the money I paid for this game, I got a lot of content out of it. I I do enjoy the fighting system immensely and the optimization of the game while while a relatively minimalistic is pretty decent. So let's take a look at the options menu and check the settings. That's all you get. You you can choose if you want to see the frame rates or not. But as you can see there the game is running at a stable 60 FPS frame rate uh, which is a uh, which is an important thing if you're playing a fighter because better frame rates means better better judgment and situational situational aw awareness if you're a professional player uh, the lower the frame rate the harder it, the harder it is for you to actually judge your next your opponent's moves your next move it's because the the gameplay relies heavily on animations to start up, connect, and finish the punch your character is commence your the attack your character is actually making. So if you're if the game is running at 30 FPS and your opponent is playing at a, at 60 FPS, your opponent will definitely win. Granted, if you're a skilled player, you you can probably judge when you you will instinct to instinctively know when the animation is over and you will do your next move for example you might block pull back or just continue into the next attack or or you were or you will just wait for the con for the opponent's attack to hit it, it depends on what what your plan is uh, for now we'll just turn off the frame rate and take a look at the remaining options the anti-aliasing is turned up to to the max. The light bloom effects are turned on because the game is a very very nice looking one. And I apologize if I sound already const well not constipated but exhausted. But this is the fifth time I'm trying to record this because my PC kept crashing when I tried to record this before, and and it's nearly midnight. So I want I want to finish this for for this week. And also move on to the next video and then go to bed because I have work to do in the morning. Uh, anyway, this is not about me, that's about the game, so let's get back to work, or let's get back to the video in this case. As you can see, we cannot adjust the amount of the amount of options when it comes to display options are limited. But in my, my in my honest opinion, this is a 2D fighter, and motion blur and character details aren't as important as I, as frame rates. In, in all honesty, yes, it's a good thing if you can differentiate differentiate your character from the backgrounds and your opponent. But I I sincerely doubt that you want to spend time on admiring. The buckles on someone's belt, for example. 
It's it might be more impressive in a 3D fighter. But then again, you're moving at I'm not going to say breakneck breakne breakneck speeds, but you're more fo more focused on keep keeping your momentum and avoiding the enemy attacks and attacking the opponent. And that sounds stupid, but let's roll with it. The sound oh, sorry, wrong button. Sound and language options are again limited, but luckily the the vo volume sliders are separate, which is always nice, and I can adjust which. But what do I want to focus on when I'm listening to something? So if I want to, if I don't want to listen to the music, I'll just turn it off. Or if I don't want to hear the sound effects, I can also turn them off or increase the volume and hear them more. And hear them more than voice acting, for example. But I would recommend I would recommend against it. The voice acting is pretty is pretty good, honestly. Uh, both the both the Japanese and English voice acting is spectacular, in, at least in my opinion. And granted, we only have we only have a choice between the English and Japanese voices, so the lack of the lack of voices to compare is kind of sad, but for what I got, I'm I'm happy with it. We can also choose the subtitles. We'll stick to the English ones because that's the only language I can actually read of of the four options. As you can see, it's either English or the three major languages of the Orient. Okay, that's the audio. Let's check network options are well, I'm not too I'm not too familiar with network options because I don't usually play fighting games online. I usually play play fighters on tournaments with other people in the in the same room with other people. So it's I try to avoid multiplayer because of specifically because of the lag. In a fighting game, that's that's probably worse than than a lower frame rate. And I would recommend I would recommend that you play online if you're if you're bored or just want to see how how online how the online community is. But that's not what we're here for. We're we're just here to check the check the port the check the port of the game on the PC. Yes, this this is a PC port, and and surprisingly, it's working wonderfully. It's not crashing when I'm trying to play it. It's it will recognize my controller, and I could also play with a keyboard setup. But I would recommend that you play with a controller in hand. Some games are probably better enjoy, in, enjoyed with a mouse and keyboard, but fighters and specific action games such as Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, and other platinum games, for example, are more controller friendly than than a mouse and keyboard friendly. Yes, you can play them, but some some movement inputs are kind of difficult if you don't have a. Well, I'm calling these mushrooms with these sticks on for for movement and camera control because I have no idea how you call them in English. I mean, in my native language language, we just call call them mushrooms, so I'm I'm sticking with that. Anyway, uh, the keys. Every action has a rebindable key, which is which is spectacular because I I could set up a control scheme that's more that's more that's more friendly to for me than the default settings. Uh, since I only have one controller, we cannot uh, check the uh, we cannot check the secondary controls for the default. For the default settings, and, and for that I apologize, but at the moment I have no idea how to... Oh wait. I have... Maybe we can... Yeah. Oh, these are... Uh, okay. I did have the controller for the second one, uh, for the second controller as well. Uh, okay, this is kind of embarrassing. But, yeah, as you can see, we can... The game features a split... Well, not a split, scre split screen, but... Uh, couch multiplayer. Well, 
you you can play with a friend on a couch with a controller or with a controller versus the keyboard. But still, I would recommend the controllers. And let's see, what else do we have? We could change the gameplay's difficulty as well as the number of rounds and the timers in the said rounds. And I think that's about it. No, 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 no. Okay, that wrong button. My apologies. So, those were the sayings. They are limited, but for what I got from the from what I got from from the game, I am not going to complain too much. The anime, well, yeah, as you can see, the the game has an anime aesthetic to it because it's an anime fighter, and it also has an anime called Blaze Blue Central. No, it's not. That's the sequel. Uh, the game has an anime ad adaptation of its own, which follows the events of Calamity Trigger and probably the uh, partially the events of Central Friction, which is the sequel to, to Calamity Trigger. Uh, anyway, this the Continuum Shift. Uh, no wait, Central fr Friction is the third game. Um, okay, a little bit co confusing names and sequels aside. What is Continuum Shift Extend? Basically, it's Calamity Trigger re a remake of Calamity, a remake of Calamity Trigger, as well as a sequel to the story of Calamity Trigger. So yes, it's a remake and a sequel to the first game, which started off as an arcade game, then got ported to consoles, and then finally found itself on the PC. And for its out first outing on the PC, I I am impressed. The gameplay modes I I got from for its for the game's asking price are well well you can see they're not numerous, but there there is a bunch of them. You have a basic arcade mode where you choose a character and fight a set number of battles until you finish and get a, a probably a short skit of a story for the ending. What, what happens when the character wins? A tournament or defeats the main boss of his arcade of his arcade of his own arcade ladder. A basic, well, not a basic, but the versus mode where you can play where you can play against bots or just play with a friend. A score attack mode where you just fight continuously until and earn points for for uh, give me a sec for the abyss mode, which is an um, again a Endless fighter, but you can upgrade your character for as the as the game progresses. So it has elements of RPG in it, but once you once you get defeated by the, once you're defeated, that's it. You that's your highest score. You and you have to start all over again, which is which is honestly fun. You cannot sometimes you get invaded by other players and you have to. And you have to compare your builds. Well, you won't. You get to compare your your builds against someone else's build in a fight and see who wins at the. Well, the skill prevails in the end, but the upgrades you choose will give you a slight advantage or a disadvantage compared to your enemy. Uh, I will show you. I will show you what I mean by that momentarily. But let's just list some of the rest of the gameplay modes. You also have a challenge mode. Challenge mode, which is a mission, a specific, a fight with specific goals in mind. You choose a character, and you have to achieve a, a certain number of attacks, or defeat an enemy in a certain amount of time, or defeat defeat some, beat someone up without taking any damage. That sort of thing. And finally, we have the story mode, which is a visual novel and a and a fighter mixed into one. The story mode is nicely voice acted by the by both the by the voice cast in both Japanese and English versions. So, if you want to just sit down and relax with a, I'm not gonna say an interesting story. Well, it is an interesting story for a fighting game where it it provides a good excuse for characters to fight each other. But the majority of the story mode is simply reading through text 
through reading through the scenes or listening to the characters talk to each other and then get interrupted by a fight occasionally. Uh, granted, I did... I never managed to pass... I never managed to finish the... Well, not the story of Calamity Trigger or Continuum... I managed to finish off the Calamity Trigger and Continuum Shift, but after my PC... Cr after the last crash on... After my PC crashed for the last time... After the last recording, it, everything got reset, so... Most of my progress is lost, as you can already see. But that's not a bad thing, as... I can always replay the game and enjoy a, a fun story with likable characters and hateable villains. And also enjoy a very, very enjoyable soundtrack. If... Honestly, if the game was bad, I would just purchase it... Well, if the soundtrack was on on sale separately, I would just purchase the soundtrack if the game was terrible. But thankfully it isn't. It's a... It's a challenging fighter with, with a lot of with a lot of likable characters and interesting playstyles. I would like to show you what I mean by that, but as you can see, most of every every character story is locked up, locked away, and I'll have to play through this again in order to in order to finish the game once and for all. But luckily, apart from the story mode, there there is also a tips mode, which is. Which is a mini visual novel of itself, where you can see the cheaper versions of characters in a more comedic setting as they're explaining the lore of the game. Uh, I will not. I'm honestly not gonna bore you with that at the moment. We'll just skip to the fighting bit because I'm probably jammering on for 10 minutes without showing you anything interesting. So let's see what. Uh, let's show you the. Let's show you the abyss. The RPG, the Please RPG section of the fighter, and from there you can actually see the the gameplay mechanics as well as the the fighting styles of characters. So we'll for this one we'll take Ragna of the Blood Edge, who is the main character and and the poster boy of Blaze Blue. Just give me a second to choose a color palette for him. But sadly, the you don't get to choose which which custom your character carries. You can only choose his col color palette. But to be honest, every character has a unique has his own has a unique design and a memorable age. a memorable stance, pose, and voice lines, as well as a personality. So you're not. You won't regret who- I'm not gonna regret who- There isn't much to regret if you choose- No matter who you choose, you won't regret it. So, uh, we upgraded Ragna's stats at them. At least the base- the first tier of his stats, and we'll start off the Abyss mode. The will of fate is turning! Rebel 1. Action! So as you can see, the game is... Oh shit. It, it is a challenging fighter. Oh no, 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 no. It is a... As you can see, the anime artwork is... Hard at... It's really... <laughs> visible in this one. And I'm glad the artworks went with uh, something they're familiar with. These guys are. Uh, I'm sorry. I know I'm stuttering a lot, but as, as I said, I'm late. I'm tired, and I really want to focus on showing you how the game works. So an interesting, interesting thing about the abyss mode is once you finish fighting with one character, you move on to the next fight, but your health bar stays the same as. As it was at the end of the fight, it won't reset. Rebel it will just one. stay. The s Action. It will stay on whatever percentage you had left. So if you if you know what you're doing, you can you can either avoid taking damage completely, or you can or you can actually oh, you can use your opponent's. Well, 
not your opponents, but who's your... Okay, I have no idea. Some of your... Some characters have abilities that will heal them, such as, for example, Ragna. He has a vampiric aura of sorts. When, for once he manages to hit an opponent enough times with a sword, he will take a portion, portion of their health for himself. He's not a vampire, but... He has a vampiric ability of sorts. Rebel one. And as the game progresses, um, I'll be fighting stronger opponents and using uh, and have to and I'll have to use more uh, and I'll have to upgrade my character even more in order to survive. Well, it's gonna hurt. Uh, okay, Here comes a new Oh, nice. Uh, we got invaded by another player who spent a lot of points on heat on heat abilities, which are special, which is a special moves meter. So this might be an interesting ma interesting match. He he is using Tao Kaka, which is a more or less a technical character with a lot of special. The will is turning. Yeah, a lot of special moves. Well, I'm using Ragna, Ragna, who is uh, more of a basic beginner-friendly character who, who ha doesn't he doesn't have as many special attacks, but he does have a lot of basic, powerful basic attacks. So, as you can see, I'm using the I'm using his sword a lot, even though and one, even though I also have my hands and feet. At the moment, I'm. More folks, I'm focusing heavily on stronger attacks than, than speed type of attacks. And my strategy is rewarded with a quick victory. And once we defeat an invader, we can choose one of the following rewards. Do we want to refuel our health or do we want to upgrade one of our stats? Since I have plenty of points, I won't be wait, I won't be taking those. I will take. Uh, I think I'll take the upgrade for my shields. And that's about it for. Yeah, excuse me. That's about it for Blaze Blue. It's it's a fun fighting game with a lot of unique characters Rebel and unique fighting styles. And excuse me, I'm just gonna pause this for a second. Ed. It has a lot of likable characters with a fun story and a and a very well. I'm not gonna say a yeah. It is it is a deep fighting system. It, so if you sink your teeth into it, you'll you can really call yourself a well. If you sink your teeth into any fighting game, you can call it call yourself a professional. But I think this, as the game, as the franchise progress progressed, it got more interesting mechanics, more characters, and there's always something, something else that draws you into this game. I honestly have, I don't know how to express this. Uh, okay, maybe it will not be, be the game of the fighter of the year as, as I don't know, Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, but. It does have its own audience. It knowing and and it has that special something that Arc System always knows how to do. It uses a correct combination of theatrics, of fighting systems, of fighting skills, music, sound effects, visual effects, and visual simple visual aesthetic that you just get drawn into it and just enjoy the game as an well not an art form but as a season of an anime yeah let's go with that uh, every game that comes out feels like a season of an like a new anime season it has a it has a beginning it has a interest well it has a well not the most gripping of plots but a plot that keeps you interested interested in playing and it has a satisfying end to it. But if you're not into the plot, the fighting system is also really, really fun to... as a fun one, I have to admit. The, I'm, I'm not a professional player, nor, nor am I a master of this game. I'm, 
I'm usually just button, button mashing and and sometimes occasionally utilize some spe some combo move, some combination attacks or special input attacks. But even if I'm, but even if a total newbie like me can play this and win in sunny sunny to sixty time percent of the percent of the oh, excuse me, let's let's try this again. If, even if a newbie like me can win in a six in a 60 60 70 percent of the fights he's in this game has to be doing something right this game is doing something right the combat system is easy enough to learn but difficult to master and I honestly don't feel cheated if I lose a fight to someone else to a player that's sitting next to me I know it's some, I know it's because I messed something up with my own inputs, or didn't didn't read my opponent's attacks properly, or just got impatient and attacked while he was using a faster attack and got punished for it. So that's about everything I had to say for the game. It's game of Blaze Blue. Uh, should you buy it? Yes. Would Would you have fun? Yes. And do get enough for do get enough content for your money. That's ab that's absolutely true. Uh, I would recommend that you buy this on a sale or in a bundle if you're a, you, if you're able to, because a you're you'll save up you'll save up some money. That's that's your first interest, to be honest. And second, you'll you will still you will support your you will support the developer, but. Actually, there is no, yeah, excuse me. Okay, there is no cons in there are no cons in that logic. You're you are supporting the developer, but you're getting them less money, which is partially a good thing considering what Arc System Works has been doing lately. Yeah, so if you're if you're interested in Arc System game Arc System games, play them, but buy them on. On a sale or in a bundle, it it will tell it tells the developer what type of a game do you want. You want a game with a lot of content, with enough content that will keep you satisfied for years or yeah for for years to come, and also give them something to think. If you're more interested in a complete game that has all has a full roster with with an interesting story and gameplay modes. They will actually put in the effort on creating such games. They will not. They will not have. They will not hide their games behind paywalls or keep some characters locked up be as DLC. So, if if you're interested in playing us in a fighting game, buy buy Blaze Blue, Continuum Shift Extend. It's well worth your money, and it also sends the message to the developer that this is the type of a fighter you're looking for, or. Not just Blaze Blue, but in general, if if you're looking for a, if you want Mortal Kombat to improve, but you're not happy with something, buy an older title that has has the features you want. Anyway, that's that's it for me. And since it's already past midnight, I'm ending this video here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. My name has been B Dami, and good night.